Moving on to another uh, Moscow spectroscopic study. Uh, this one's a joint contribution from DOE Air Products, Texas A&M, and Center of Applied Energy Research, and it's authored by uh, several authors. And the presenter will be uh, Dr. Rao from the DOE. MOSFOS spectroscopy is a very potential and very sensitive experimental technique uh, which can measure uh, transition energies between nuclear levels in an iron atom which has been embedded in any solid. Uh, the transition energies, the nuclear transition energies are influenced by uh, the density of, uh, charge density of the nucleus and the local symmetry of the iron atom and this magnetic nature. These three parameters or factors can be uh, found out in terms of, or can be characterized in terms of the three parameters through most spectroscopy. They are isomer shift, quadruple splitting, and magnetic field acting at the center of the nucleus. Uh, so in any, uh, in a, any given atom, in any iron compound or phase, has a fingerprint in terms of these three parameters. So once you do most spectroscopy measurements, we'll be able to identify the phases that are present. And uh, you should you can also identify, not only that, you can also quantify the particular phase that is present. We have used uh, MOSFOT spectroscopy to characterize uh, iron catalysts, which are uh, as briefly, fresh catalysts, and which have been pre-treated, and also which have been subject to fish of synthesis. Uh, I will, uh, today I will talk about two sets of uh, catalysts that were characterized. One set was obtained from U.S. Department of Energy's Laporte Pilot Plant Demonstration Run, which was conducted in uh, August 1992. And um, the composition of uh, the catalyst that was used is given here, and it was prepared by UCI. And the second set of uh, catalysts are prepared by Professor Bukur and uh, this is the composition. And here we have varied the uh, support right from 0 to 100 uh, <coughs> SiO2 relatively. And it has been co-printed uh, in the uh, CO at 280 centigrade, so 24 hours per atmosphere. They are used for both uh, fixed bed and the study, but I will be talking about uh, fixed bed results. <coughs> As Dr. Bukur has pointed out, we have essentially found in both the sets of uh, catalysts, we use the catalyst, essentially four uh, iron phases. They are magnetite, Fe3O4, uh, excellent prime carbide, we have called Fe2.2C, and pi carbide, Fe5C2, and an oxide by superparameter Me, which has a dimension of about uh, 80 angstrom or less than that which you show what is called uh, relaxation phenomena, superparametric relaxation phenomena in most of the uh, Now I'll talk about the results that are obtained uh, from the first set of uh, use backlist. Uh, the run conditions for the Laporte demonstration pilot plant run are given here. And uh, notice the baseline conditions are here given. Uh, the gas ratio, H2 basically is 0.7, and the space velocity is a 2,500 per normal meters per hour per kg of iron, and the 200 psi is the pressure, temperature is 265. 
and uh, the run was conducted for nine days at this uh, baseline conditions. But before that, it was activated uh, under these conditions. The temperature was at 280, and so 265. The pressure is 150, and the space velocity is uh, 2,000 uh, nanometers per hour at kg fire, and the same gas, h 2 is 0.7. Uh, <clears throat> after the baseline condition um, run is over, uh, they have changed the, the run parameters to see the effect on the product, the hydrocarbon product distribution. Uh, at this point, they have changed the uh, space velocity from 2,500 to 5,000, keeping other parameters constant. And that run was taken for three days. At the end of three days, the pressure was uh, changed from 200 to 400, maintaining the same space, velo space velocity and temperature. And at that stage, it was run for two days. And at the end of two days, they have written all the parameters to the baseline parameters uh, to see whether uh, the product distribution will get back to what, uh, what, what was in the beginning. Subsequent to this, the syngas ratio was changed from 0.7 to 2. So these are the base condition. These were uh, reported by Bharat Bhatt in the DOE introduction contact of the UN meeting at Pittsburgh. <coughs> Here, these are the typical mass of spectra um, of the catalyst, the report uh, catalyst. This spectrum is from Europe, was a thing uh, for the catalyst which was used, which was uh, taken out at the 450 hours of uh, time on steam. You notice it consists mostly uh, ethylene carbide, high carbide, magnetite. Now, the catalyst uh, from the same batch uh, that was used for the report uh, was used in an autoclave uh, at UOP, and this is the spectrum that we get. Uh, you see they are very similar, both of them mostly carbide, except that here in autoclave, you have higher uh, content of excellent prime carbide as compared to the report demonstration uh, of my plan. Uh, here, uh, I will present the variation of different phases as a function of time on stream. As mentioned earlier, we see four different phases, and this is how they vary as a function of time on stream. I want to notice that the ethylene carbide uh, progressively increases, whereas high carbide uh, progressively decreases, sorry, the magnetite progressively decreases. While oxide and the high carbide show so some sort of correlation, that they are uh, reciprocate, uh, reciprocating each other. When one is high, that one is low, and vice versa. It's quite an interesting uh, observation. I want to notice that these are the baseline region and this is the time duration when the space velocity was changed and this is the uh, uh, time on stream when the pressure was altered and again <coughs> here at this point we are back to baseline condition and the, at this stage the syngas ratio will change h 2 ratio will change to 2 from 0.7 Now I will show you some correlations that I will observe from the results of uh, this report run. <coughs> this is how the space velocity varies as a function of TOS. And this is the conversion of uh, CO, gram mole of CO converted. And uh, this is the usage ratio, uh, how it varies with the TOS. Usage ratio is defined as number of gram moles of H2 converted per uh, mole of CO converted. Uh, it signifies, uh, it reflects the water gas shift activity. Uh, low usage ratio means a higher uh, water gas shift activity, the way it is defined, and uh, a high value of usage ratio means low water gas shift activity. Now, <coughs> I mentioned earlier, we have seen uh, magnetite phase present in the catalyst, and that they seem to decrease as a function of the OES. In magnetite, you have, there are, you have two sides. One is an octahedral side, and the other is a tetrahedral side. For a stoichiometric uh, magnetite, uh, you have two octahedral atoms for every one tetrahedral atom. So one would get 
the occupancy of the by a site to be ideally true for, <coughs> for a stoichiometric magnetite. However, we find that we have as low as uh, one, that is cation deficient magnetite, that means there are less number of hydrogen uh, of iron at the occupying B site as compared to A, A site. So, and that varies as you, uh, as you go on, as the time on stream increases. It uh, rises up to rate of two and again comes back. Here, the usage ratio shows some sort of uh, linear uh, increase, which shows that water that shift is uh, decreasing linearly. And uh, this level of change may be attributed to a change uh, in the uh, space velocity which has been brought in for purpose, purposefully. So, um, Again, again, it's linear in this region of the uh, PYS. It shows the BYA ratio seems to show some sort of a correlation with uh, the other uh, parameters that are shown here. <coughs> now, uh, the overall um, results of this set of uh, get list um, given here. Magnetite uh, seems to be involved in the water gas reaction. Uh, actually, is known, magnetite is known to be involved in water gas reaction, and that's uh, which the domestic uh, demonstrated this uh, earlier in the literature, and how there seems to be consistent with this. And the uh, second part, apart from the quantity of magnetite state that is present, probably it is the B by ratio that is significant to the water gas reaction, as shown by the previous correlation that has just not in the previous transparency. For higher uh, water gas activity, looks like. That B by ratio is low, indicating that cation deficient magnetite gives rise to better water shift activity. <coughs> now, <coughs> I'll go over to the second set of uh, catalysts, uh, which are given here. These are the catalysts. Uh, the here we vary the SiO2 content from 0 to 100. And as I mentioned earlier, the pre treated in CO at 20 degrees anyway for four hours at atmospheric pressure. And here are the phases that we obtained from most of the cross uh, The chite arbite and uh, oxide. When I said it's a supervalent oxide, uh, it represents a small size uh, particles, about 100 or less than 80 or less than 80 angstroms. Only in one case we see a little bit of satellite. Uh, Whereas uh, what Dr. Bukur has shown in the view side, that is a different catalyst, and point three proper and point eight as shown. This is different uh, composition. <coughs> we are the other phases <coughs> that we observe uh, in the user catalyst that have been subjected to the, that is the catalyst of previous uh, CO. Uh, pre-treated catalyst, which are being subjected to fissure pop synthesis. Here again, we see, uh, I mean, we basically two major components of uh, iron pump, pump phases, that is magnetite and uh, oxide. So there are uh, small amounts of silicate and the side light, and in the chite um, right, which you have seen, which was evident, the CO pre-treated uh, catalyst as well. Uh, CO created the catalyst. Now, the FT conditions are given here. H2CO is equal to 1, temperature is 235, pressure is the 15 atmosphere, is the fixed value here. I want you to notice that the magnetite decreases as you increase the same term, as I the end Here also, a similar trend uh, was seen. The high carbon decreases as you increase the as the end it is quite likely <laughs> that uh, some silicate, surface silicate uh, form is formed on the catalyst and that is preventing the CO to penetrate into the bulk of uh, the catalyst and thereby decreasing the uh, formation of the carbide. <coughs> and chi carbide seems to be getting converted into magnetite as you saw in the previous uh, transparency. Now, here the water. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. 
Here we have plotted the chi carbide content as a function of uh, SiO2 content. You see it shows uh, at like this degrees. And uh, in the same plot, we also plotted the conversion, H2 plus CO plus H2 conversion, uh, converted at 1050 hours of POS. Both show a somewhat similar trend, both the decrease with the SiO2 content. Now, the activity, FTA, fish flow activity, at uh, 170 hours, round about that, is seen to decrease uh, to down to 45% for those catches which has got low SiO2, that is where X is equal to 0 or 8. On the other hand, for uh, uh, catches which has got higher uh, SiO2 content, that is 40 to 100, that remains constant. This is the variation, but that remains constant with uh, higher uh, AQOS uh, values. So these um, factors indicate that pi carbide is more active for FT uh, synthesis rather than uh, oxide phase. The present measurement seems to indicate that the single pretreatment in this case uh, converts oxide into pi carbide, and the FT synthesis during FT synthesis. Pi carbide seems to be being converted into methane, and pi uh, carbide seems to be more active than the uh, oxide. The effect of uh, silica support on iron phase conversion, and pi carbide decreases with increasing SiO2, which was in the table. Similarly, the metallite also seems to decrease <coughs> during FT synthesis. With increasing CO2 content. This work is uh, supported by DOE and we acknowledge the new demand by Cambodia. This was carried out. Thank you. Papers open for questions? Sure. Yes. Uh, as was mentioning, uh, last second here, I'll magnetize as a possible active phase in Fisher Tops. I just want to point to the fact that in several hundred ammonia plants, you have high temperature shift catalysts uh, based, based on magnetized installed in the thin gas, and they don't make hydrocarbon, and there's quite precise criteria defined in earlier literature for when you're making hydrocarbons and when a uh, magnetite turns into a carbide and becomes a fissure tops catalyst. So I'm sort of surprised that this issue regularly pops up again. Calvin? Uh, I wanted to bring up the question of the super paramagnetic phase that you referred to. Mm -hmm. uh, you refer to it as being an oxide. Uh, it could be oxide and oxide, but we don't know. Unless you want to do good low temperature, we don't know what exactly. Right. So just uh, I, I would think it might even be some uh, super paramagnetic carbides. Yeah, but the cause, yeah, that is true. That uh, in fact, we also have suspicion. But so far, I mean, there are some uh, cases where uh, uh, carbon did show some effect. So, right. Um, the the other question I wanted to bring up in relation to that is: Is it possible that uh, exposure of your samples to air during transfer to the Mossbauer cell resulted in the formation of the super paramagnetic oxide, so that it is an artifact of, of your experiment? Most of these are wax coated, they are taken from wax. So the possibility of oxidation, but there's a good point, what you say, probably were better to do in situ uh, and that would clear up the matter. But these are all mostly wax coated. Yeah, but not pre treated. Uh, okay, uh, my suggestion is we have about five minutes. Why don't we uh, just take a mini break and get